instead of what we are. All right. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Starting. We'll see it in a moment. You ready? All right. We are live. Excellent. Well, let's just give it a shot. Um, all right. Well, uh, welcome to the inaugural Data Science Club video. Uh, Ravi and I are here and we're going to just go through how to create an anaconda environment uh, using the UAB On Demand Job Composer. Um, so I'll go over here. Um, so we built an anaconda environment all ready to go for you for this series of uh, videos and analysis. And the URL is under this um, GitLab uh, link that we have. It's uh, HTTPS uh, gitlab.rc.uab.edu slash rc dash data dash science slash uh, horovodes dash environment. Um, we'll put the link to it in the description for this video uh, for anybody that wants to give this a whirl. Um, and so you just go there and you can go down and under the readme, um, it's got this little handy dandy piece of code that you can copy and paste into the job composer on, on demand. So uh, let's go log in to the on-demand portal. The authentication. All right, so now we're at the on-demand portal. We're gonna go to jobs, job composer. All right, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a new job and this is where we're gonna copy and paste that code in from. Uh, so let's talk through what this code is doing. Um, so this is a uh, Slurm job script, and uh, so it basically is gonna run a series of commands. Uh, these things with the hash in front of them at the beginning are uh, setting up the environment for the rest of the script. Uh, the, specifically the ones that say sbatch are things that are talking to the Slurm job scheduler. And people who have already used job scripts would notice that we are not putting in things such as time parameters or, or uh, memory parameters. Basically when you don't specify these parameters it takes on the default values that we have given to the scheduler. So like for instance Time, if you don't specify time, your job is going to have the time limit of one hour. And similarly, if you don't specify memory for that job script, it's going to again have the memory limit of one gigs. Yeah. And uh, creating an anaconda environment isn't super intensive, and, uh, and so that's why we're just using the defaults. Um, you'll all also notice that we're using this partition equals Pascal nodes. Um, which on the UAB cluster specifies uh, nodes that have a GPU associated with them. Um, and then we're asking for one GPU. Uh, in this particular script, that's more of an example, just so you can see uh, if you were to write job scripts for machine learning where you needed a GPU, uh, this would be how you specify that. Um, and then the next piece here is uh, git clone. So this is going to uh, clone this repository into your particular user space on the Chiha cluster, uh, into your data user, uh, Blazor ID, and then uh, NBOTW for notebook of the week. Um, and then after that, uh, we're going to load a couple of modules just to make sure the Anaconda knows uh, what libraries are available to it and then uh, we're gonna change directories to that directory we just created with the git clone command and then we're gonna create our environment based on uh, the files that we just downloaded. Uh, 
But the nice thing about Job Composer is we're not actually having to go through all those steps ourselves. Uh, we'll just ask the job scheduler to do it. So again, we had open ed editor. So we'll copy and paste in here. And then just make sure you save it. Close out. So do you think we need dash 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 partition? Oh, you're right. I probably need to change this to dash dash partition. Yep. Good catch. We'll modify that in the Git uh, project. Yeah. So. We're live. We can we can go ahead and modify it right now. Um, come in here so that then when you guys uh, come in here to do this, you won't have to do that same thing. Go ahead and commit. Uh, Git is a really nice way of telling us what we've updated over time. Um, so we fixed an error uh, in the job script. Alright, now we can go back and now it's fixed. So when you guys do this, you won't have to change that, mm -hmm. but it's nice to notice anyway. Um, Alright, so yeah, as Ravi noticed, we need dash dash partition, uh, dash dash gres, make sure it's saved. You can double check that by again coming down to the bottom side here and making sure that it reads out the way that you expected it to. And then we just submit it with this uh, green submit job button. We submit it and it says that it's running. If we refresh the page, we'll see this uh, file over here, this slurm with the job ID start to pop out. We can look at it. If you just refresh this page, it will gradually show you more and more things. So you see it started out just saying cloning, collecting, now it's solving the environment, and now it's preparing it um, for extra Linux nerd points. You can come in here and say open terminal, and you can go tail dash F, and then uh, start typing slurm and then just hit tab. And then what this will do is as the uh, job is spitting out uh, things to the command line, we can watch it kind of as it's happening. So if you want to watch and see whether or not your job script is running appropriately, uh, you can use this tail dash uh, F uh, command and uh, watch the log as it's being created. Um, and that should be about it. In a few minutes, uh, this environment should be created for us. We'll just keep on watching it for a while, make sure that it does what it should do. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and for people who are curious, all the things that you're seeing in this log file are the results of all the different commands that William was talking a little while back. About. So the first line that cloning into is the result of the. Oh, I'll see if I can find it while you're talking. Yeah. Yeah. So the cloning into portion that we saw in the output log, that's a result of this command that the one that has been highlighted were get clone. And similarly, the all the recent logs uh, outputs that you are seeing, they are from those conda environment create commands. Executing transaction. And this should go pretty fast. When I was doing it, um, because it cached all of the necessary files in my particular Anaconda folder, yeah. it went pretty quickly. If you're doing this for the first time, how, how long does it take to create an Anaconda environment? Uh, so if you're doing it for the first time, uh, it should still not take that long. Uh, so like over here, it took about, I'd say, a couple of minutes or yeah, something? Yeah, a couple of minutes, yeah. So just, uh, so if you're doing it for the first time, make sure that you have five minutes of time if you are look, trying to look through them. Otherwise, you can just submit them and just 
do something else and it should yeah. get your environment ready for you yeah that makes sense i think it's done yes um so yeah when when it gets to the end you'll see this uh, to activate use source activate to deactivate use source deactivate we can come back to job composer and yeah indeed it says that it, it completed and then if we click on that log file it'll show us that entire log file and you could scroll up and down and see all the things that it did um, and all the packages it installed into this environment um, now if you want to test whether or not that worked uh, if we scroll down a little bit further um, we can see how to test it out to make sure that it'll use the GPU um, and so what we'll do is we'll actually start up an interactive uh, Jupyter Notebook session. Uh, so we'll come back up to our dashboard We can close out these other things. Welcome dashboard, interactive apps, Jupyter Notebook. And then you see there's all these things that we can fill in. Um, so we're going to come over here and we'll copy and paste this into the first part. And here again, we're loading in the modules required. Uh, this CUDA is required for us to be able to talk to the GPU, uh, which is what we're going to want to do uh, for a lot of the examples later. And module load Anaconda, again, that gives us our Jupyter environment, but it also means that we can activate um, this notebook of the week environment. So we'll come over here and we'll paste it in there. Yeah, okay. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna copy and paste this notebook directory into here. And so this will take us into our particular uh, user directory and start us up in this notebook of the week directory because there's a notebook that you downloaded when you did the git clone uh, that will let us test whether or not there's a GPU available. Um, again, to make sure that you have a GPU available, you're going to want to select the Pascal nodes partition. Um, how many GPUs do you get with a Jupyter Notebook currently? Uh, currently, you get one GPU whenever you specify Pascal nodes as the partition. Okay. So for um, Jupyter Notebooks on the on-demand uh, portal, if you do this Pascal nodes, you get one GPU. So we'll launch that. It shouldn't take too long. Um, refresh. All right, there we go. Oh. All right, so if you see this message, fail to connect. It also mentions it in their text yeah. that you can try it again. Yeah. It's basically just setting up connections for you to open up. Yeah. Oh, I think it. I think that other one really did fail. Hmm. All right, let's try that again. I might have to specify this as WS Monroe instead of. And I'll delete these other ones. Oh, well, that's interesting. All right, so that's not working the way that it should. Let's see. It's not running. Right. Can you try to remove the source activate? Thing? Yeah, we can remove that. Change this to one hour. Because I believe what might be happening is in this environment, uh, in BOTW, we might not have the Jupyter Notebook enabled. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, clicked it too fast. There we go. All right. So now I can click get available GPUs. And 
our environment is the MBOTW. And then if we run that first cell, it's thinking, thinking, thinking. Still thinking. A lot of times when you start one of these Jupyter Notebooks up, it takes a little bit for it to uh, get warmed up. While it's still setting up, I'll go over here and we'll edit this readme to not tell you to do this source activate since that caused a problem. So now it's all heated up so we can run that and see it says device GPU zero. So that's saying that the GPU with the ID zero is the available GPU for this uh, particular Jupyter Notebook. Um, and so if this reads out correctly and gives you device GPU with some number after it, um, then your Anaconda environment's working properly and you can use GPUs for uh, your development with this notebook. Any yeah. other thoughts, Ravi? No, that's basically it. And all these instructions should help you get your Anaconda environments ready. And uh, they would, those Anaconda environments would be useful for you in running the actual machine learning no notebooks that we'll be showing you next time. Yeah. All right. Uh, Thanks very much and check again next time.